Boeing Starliner spacecraft comes home today, and we're glad you've joined us to see it take place. I am Stephen Seisloff from Boeing Communications, and with me here is NASA's Gary Jordan. Over across the hall is NASA's Leah Cheshire in the ISS flight control room. Hey, it's, uh, it's good to be with you, Steve. Everything's looking good for undocking uh, later today. Uh, we're looking at an undock 2.36 uh, p.m. Eastern Time, 1.36 p.m. Central. And uh, we did get a go from both the International Space Station and Starliner teams. Starliners go for undock. Weather's looking good, Steve. Looking real good. We will also go out shortly to White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. That is where the landing teams from Boeing and NASA are getting ready to welcome the spacecraft back to Earth. The journey back to Earth today will start around 1.36 p.m. Houston time when the hooks unlatch and springs on Starliner's docking ring push the spacecraft away from the International Space Station. The small thrusters on Starliner will increase that separation speed, gradually helping Starliner move carefully away from the orbital laboratory. Today's move away from the ISS is as carefully planned as the rendezvous and docking that took place on Friday. And um, once Starliner moves away from that forward port, it will fire its uh, small thrusters and perform what's called an outbound fly around maneuver. That's going to carry it up and over the International Space Station. And then it's going to lower it behind the space station, ultimately um, leaving the approach ellipsoid. All of those maneuvers will take just about an hour to complete, and then Starliner will be on its course for, uh, for a landing later today. That landing is set for about uh, 5.49 p.m. Central Time, 6.49 p.m. in the east, and uh, that's where our teams in New Mexico will be waiting for it. That's right. So we'll continue our coverage uh, this afternoon until the Starliner exits that approach ellipsoid. It is a very important marker. Uh, while the spacecraft itself is inside the approach ellipsoid, uh, it is a joint operation. So we'll, uh, we, we mentioned the go from both the space station and Starliner teams that we're tracking go for undock. These teams working together. Uh, Steve, once we're outside the approach ellipsoid, it's really up to the teams over in the white flight control room, in the control room from this view that you see to your left. Of course, now working in tandem with the International Space Station flight control teams over there on the right. But it'll really be up to the Starliner team, Steve, uh, to get the Starliner home, like you said, uh, later this afternoon. It's going to be a busy afternoon, a lot of anticipation uh, for, this, for this that has taken place. Now, this mission began... Um, this mission began more than five days ago, almost six days ago at this point. And uh, it began with a launch aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Space Launch Complex 41. And you can see there Starliner riding the power of that Atlas V. That was on, uh, that was on Thursday, Thursday evening, and it put Starliner on a course for a uh, precise rendezvous the next day with the International Space Station. Of course, got some great views from the rocket as Starliner was heading up. Now, uh, it, it did take about 24 hours uh, to get over to the International Space Station, but finally, uh, after some demonstrations and very carefully coordinated maneuvers to get the Starliner to rendezvous with the orbiting laboratory, it did push its way in uh, for a docking. That docking time was 7.28 p.m. Uh, Central Time on Friday the 20th. Uh, the Starliner along that journey did demonstrate a lot of the capabilities of the spacecraft itself, getting ready for crew to be in inside the vehicle eventually. Uh, it tested a commanded attitude hold, tested its abort thrusters, a commanded hold from the uh, International Space Station, its ability to uh, align with the local vertical local horizon uh, attitude uh, of the Earth, uh, and then it also retreated outside of the uh, 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 keep out sphere. When it finally uh, approached and, and made contact with the International Space Station's docking adapter at the forward end that you see there, uh, that was at 7.28 p.m. Uh, and that set us up for, uh, it was really the end of the crew day when we saw that, so that was uh, late at night for the International Space Station crew who were monitoring every step of the way. Uh, they did uh, eventually open up the hatches the next day, no crew inside, right, so no rush to get that open, uh, but we were able to get some, some fantastic views uh, inside the vehicle when we opened up that hatch. 
And also, we got some great views of the spacecraft itself as it closed in. These are a little bit different than what you may have seen before. These are from alternate cameras on the outside of the International Space Station looking towards that uh, forward port where Starliner was closing in. Of course, uh, this, uh, this video is quite a bit, uh, sped up quite a bit uh, from what happened uh, live, but uh, you know, Starliner closing in uh, that way to that, uh, to that forward port. You can see the docking ring extended really clearly there. And uh, it was really a, a great example of, uh, of what the spacecraft uh, looks like when it's, when it's in flight in its, uh, in its docking mode there. And you can see that contact. Starliner came in very clean. And uh, we also got some imagery from inside the spacecraft. This is looking out the window on Starliner during the ascent, uh, during powered flight up through the clouds over uh, over Florida on Friday, uh, on Thursday, I'm sorry, May 19th, and uh, heading into uh, heading into that uh, perfect path to reach the International Space Station. You can see that roll maneuver. That was pretty cool outside of the window. The, the Atlas met, uh, uh, performed that roll maneuver on the way. Now you're seeing inside, of course, uh, the cargo strapped down, and you can see the vibrations of launch. Uh, fantastic views. That's Rosie the Rocketeer inside uh, the anthropometric uh, test device that's inside. And, of course, we got Jebediah Kerman, you see there, in the other seat, uh, the two passengers of this uncrewed test flight uh, experiencing uh, the ride aboard the Atlas V. Fantastic views. And of course, all all the fans of Kerbal Space Program very excited to see uh, to see the mascot Zero G f uh, fly up there. Got a great look at him. He had a great flight, um, I think. Uh, and and we know from from what the crew of the space station told us that uh, you know he wanted to see a lot of the uh, space station itself as well. He had a chance to get out of the seat a little bit. Now, this, these recorded views are from uh, shortly after hatch opening on Saturday, May 21st. That was Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines. Uh, they were the ones to actually open up the hatch and get those peaks inside uh, and get to meet Jebediah and um, Rosie the Rocketeer for the first time uh, in space. It was Bob Hines who was the first uh, astronaut to enter the Starliner spacecraft in orbit. And that leads us to where Starliner is right at this moment, which is latched to the forward port of the International Space Station. That is the uh, no, uh, that that is the connecting port to the uh, Harmony node on on the uh, forward-facing side of the International Space Station. And you can see Starliner docked there. That is what the uh, feature there that you see highlighted um, with the black tiles. That's the uh, that's the uh, side hatch. That's where the the crew will enter the um, enter the vehicle on launch day when it's uh, standing at the launch pad. And uh, later today, it is where the landing team. That's the the hatch that the landing team will open when uh, after Starliner descends to uh, White Sand Space Harbor. And uh, that's where the uh, landing team will uh, enter the vehicle um, shortly after after that uh, touchdown. Now, the Starliner, of course, not the only visiting vehicle aboard the International Space Station. You see that that was a live view that you were seeing in this animation. You can see uh, where the Starliner is. It's at the very forward end of the International Space Station. So upon undocking, it will pull straight out. And as part of the undocking maneuvers, will fly really over the International Space Station. But you see uh, it is a, 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 a very highly visited complex with the Crew-4 Dragon that brought four astronauts uh, to the International Space Station, the uh, cargo vehicle including Northrop Grumman's Cygnus vehicle, as well as two prog Russian Progress cargo vehicles, and then, of course, the Soyuz MS-21 uh, that brought the uh, three cosmonauts who are currently staying aboard the International Space Station, uh, seven crew members on the inside of the station now for Expedition 67. But, of course, uh, what we're tracking down is uh, the, the uh, departure and return of the Starliner spacecraft. What you're seeing here uh, are the incremental steps that we will be guiding you through until they exit uh, that secondary ring on the outside of this graphic, the approach ellipsoid. Uh, it'll pull, like I said, straight out uh, and outside of the keep-out sphere before performing an outbound fly-around. For those who followed us uh, for our uh, uh, approach and docking coverage, there was an inbound fly-around as part of that maneuver, the outbound 
outbound will send it uh, right over uh, the International Space Station. There is uh, another departure, uh, a departure burn uh, right when it uh, gets uh, pretty much at the R bar or right above the International Space Station that will send it behind uh, and get uh, outside the approach ellipsoid, setting up for some of the burns later. It's pretty short. Uh, it's a pretty short journey from the time it undocks from the International Space Station down uh, to touch down uh, off the, in the western United States in the desert. Just a, a little bit more than four hours uh, is, is that time. And we have a little bit of a closer look at uh, at the way that's going to uh, at the way that's going to look. The uh, fly around a little more detail of that. We'll go ahead and uh, show that. And having seen all of uh, all the maneuvers that Starliner is performing uh, after undocking and on to landing, you know, obviously has the attention of Starliner Mission Control here, and uh, it has just as much attention across the hall, and that is where NASA's Leah Cheshire is uh, surveying the uh, work of the uh, ISS flight controllers. Thanks, Steve. That's right. I'm here in the Mission Control Center at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And again, just right across the hall from where Starliner is being monitored. And on the console right now is the Orbit 2 team. This is the second team of the day uh, monitoring all of the systems aboard the International Space Station. Flight director right now is Vincent LaCourt. He was also the flight director when Starliner arrived on Friday, as well as we have Capcom Rob Hayhurst, who was the Capcom as well on Friday whenever we were uh, monitoring the arrival of Starliner. Now, again, contrary to the name, uh, Hayhurst is not communicating with the capsule itself, of course. He is communicating with the astronauts aboard the International Space Station, of which there are currently seven. Uh, our three cosmonauts are Sergei Korsakov, Oleg Artemyev, and Denis Matviev. And then we have three NASA astronauts, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Jessica Watkins, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Sam Samantha Cristoforetti. Shortly after 12.30 p.m. Central Time, the teams here in Mission Control pulled go for undocking today. At about an hour before undock, Starliner was transferred to internal power, meaning it's not using the power generated on the space station as it has over the last five days while it has been docked. Bob Hines and Chell Lindgren have been working over those days, uh, removing and replacing cargo on the vehicle, as well as training and preparing to monitor the undock process. They were also our two prime observers upon arrival of the vehicle. The hatch on Starliner was closed yesterday, which is really when preparation kicked off for uh, beginning when the undocking preparations began. Uh, station has now parked its solar arrays to ensure they won't be affected by any of the burns that Starliner will execute upon its departure from the space station. And the thrusters on station are inhibited, meaning that uh, it, there won't be any loads imparted as Starliner undocks from the NASA docking system. After undock, those solar arrays will be returned to their usual auto track status. And the space station's also in the proper undocking attitude, lining Starliner up with its intended deorbit path. 
Joint operations here in Mission Control Houston will continue until approach ellipsoid exit, but of course our teams will still track the mission and be watching a Starliner lands in just a few hours. And this paves the way eventually for the future crewed flight test, uh, which will bring Starliner into our rotation of visiting vehicles, bringing astronauts to and from the space station. Now let's take a look inside at the vehicle that has spent the last few days on the International Space Station. This will be the future ride for NASA astronauts with a destination of the space station. Your camera operator here being Chell Lindgren, as we mentioned, he monitored uh, the arrival and departure alongside NASA's Bob Hines, who is inside the uh, inside the vehicle. So welcome uh, to Starliner for the very first time ever uh, in space. Uh, here you can see Starliner and uh, Rosie the Rocketeer is sitting over in the commander's seat. <laughs> Along with uh, her zero-G indicator, Ker uh, Je Jebediah Kerbal. Uh, she's got a great view out uh, her window over there. Uh, and then on the uh, crewed vehicles, we'll actually have three other, uh, two other seats in here. Uh, and then lots of room for cargo as well. So we hope you enjoyed uh, Tor and Starliner with us today. And uh, with that, we'd like to hand it back to Houston. Thanks a lot for being here. <laughs> That was again a look inside Starliner. Of course, it will seat four people in future flights, but the journey was made this time by the anthropometric device Rosie the Rocketeer, honoring the original Rosie the Rivers from World War II. And again, it's a totally autonomous vehicle, but of course the crew will have the ability to fly the spacecraft if needed. We saw this demonstrated last week as it began its approach to the space station. Uh, NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren was able to turn the docking lights off and on on the spacecraft and also commanded a hold at 250 meters. We're about 17 minutes away from that intended undocked target and still receiving reports that the weather is go. Some other uh, components to Starliner are the LADAR, which is the sensor creating a 3D picture of the space station for Starliner computers. It helps the spacecraft guide itself around the space station when flying nearby. This was developed and tested in orbit aboard the space shuttle as they docked with the space station. This will be turned on, as well as the remote analog interface unit or which gathers data on the status and health of critical spacecraft systems during all phases of the mission, allowing the important system information to be stored on the spacecraft so engineers can review it once the spacecraft lands. Now, as a flight test, this mission is meant to gather all the data it possibly can about the way the vehicle and all of its systems have performed. This will be loaded into databases to compare it with pre-flight predictions and ultimately produce detailed computer models that will be used to improve and refine future missions. Teams will also uplink the entry, entry landing target, that's the data being sent to Starliner and used by the avionics to calculate the course the spacecraft needs as it'll fly around the space station and then get on the correct path to deorbit and land at White Sands in just a few hours.
and teams here in Mission Control Houston continuing to monitor the vehicle, both the International Space Station and Starliner, as we are in those uh, joint operations all the way through approach ellipsoid exit. But uh, until then, we're going to toss it back over across the hall to Starliner Mission Control, where Gary and Steve are going to continue walking you through the mission. All right, thank you, Leah. Good reports from the International Space Station side. Of course, we're tracking the Starliner and its progress here. Everything continues to look good. We just uh, heard that weather report, and the weather continues to look good. Uh, we have folks out at the landing site, and it is, quote, beautiful. Uh, so all things, all things looking good for undocking. Uh, right now aboard the International Space Station, it's flying over the southwestern uh, border of uh, Kazakhstan, over the northern Caspian Sea. So some of the views we're getting from in orbit uh, of the orbital sunset set are, uh, are, are starting to uh, uh, lessen the illumination of the spacecraft itself. The undocking we are tracking is going to be during that orbital nighttime, uh, so it will be dark views when we see uh, the Starliner undock, but again, uh, the team's uh, moving along for that on-time undocking. We are tracking 1.36 uh, p.m. Central Time this afternoon. And that undocking is going to come in, a, in about 14 minutes from now. The launch uh, the flight controllers here, uh, what, continuing to watch all their systems. Everything's looking good for that. Of course, this is a flight test. You know, the orbital flight test too, for Starliner. And you know, the whole reason um, it sounds cliche, but the whole reason you do flight tests is to find out things about your spacecraft. This is the uh, first time that Starliner has uh, flown that complex choreography for rendezvous and, and docking. And, uh, you know, whatever you find on this flight test, we're going to go through today. We're going to have the, uh, the dynamics of undocking, the fly around, and then the return to Earth uh, landing there. And, you know, we'll go over this, uh, they'll go over this spacecraft, go over all that data very, um, very thoroughly, make whatever updates need to be made. And, uh, you know, this spacecraft will be returned to Florida, processed, and then reused again on a future mission. There's another crewed flight test coming up that's going to be with astronauts on board, also going to the uh, International Space Station. That'll be a flight test as well, but with crew on board. Today's, uh, today's mission, this orbital flight test too, does not include astronauts other than the astronauts that are on the ISS, but no astronauts that are uh, inside Starliner. So a uh, lot of eyes watching this. Like I said, a lot of anticipation today. The spacecraft has been performing very well throughout this mission and uh, continues uh, continues to be careful work ahead, but uh, we're uh, some five days and 19 and a half hours into the mission and uh, looking looking very good so far. As the sun sets on the International Space Station in orbit, Steve, like you mentioned, we're, uh, this is a flight test, and uh, there are test objectives for the undocking and, and landing, uh, which will be carefully monitored by all the flight controllers uh, here in Mission Control Houston, in the Starliner Mission, con Mission Control Room, as well as International Space Station Mission Control. But it did spend five days docked to the orbiting complex. We mentioned a number of objectives that were uh, evaluated and achieved on its approach and docking to the International Space station, but once docked, uh, the mission, of course, did not stop. Uh, we were able to go through some of the hatch opening procedures. We were able to test the vehicle itself, understand a little bit better about the habitable environment inside the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, we were able to circulate air. We tested some communications with various uh, uh, locations on board the International Space Station. Uh, we provided an umbilical uh, between the station and uh, the Starliner to charge uh, the batteries and tested what's called a quiescent mode. Of course, the Starliner now is in a uh, flight test, and it's only spending five days aboard the International Space Station, but its ultimate goal uh, is to uh, do long-duration missions aboard the station, so it'll be spending a long time docked. Uh, so it tested uh, a certain mode, almost a standby mode, uh, for when it'll be docked during those long periods of time. Uh, we had a number of checkouts uh, of the systems itself, and then, of course, one of, the, one of the biggest things that we were looking forward to on the NASA side in particular was there was, there was 500 pounds of car of NASA cargo transferred inside the International Space Station, and then 600 pounds of cargo transferred into Starliner and packed for its return to Earth, including nitrogen oxygen uh, recharge system tanks uh, that'll be refurbished and filled with um, nitrogen and oxygen that provide breathable air uh, to the environment inside the space station, and they'll be flown later. Uh, but we got three of those coming home on Starliner. Everything continues to look good. We're still tracking an untimed docking uh, 10 minutes from now.
Look at that view, looking from the International Space Station into the window of Starliner, and we see there Rosie, Rosie the Rocketeer in her commander seat, uh, looking, uh, seeing her through the window there. You can see the signature, uh, the signature scarf, and of course the outlines of the helmet of the uh, Starliner spacesuit. You can also see, of course, that the uh, interior of Starliner is illuminated. It's uh, definitely shows against the uh, against the backdrop of this orbital nighttime, but uh, lovely views. Uh, I tell you, the cameras are just not disappointing us at all in any way during this uh, during this mission. Teams here in Mission Control Houston, uh, the I International Space Station Flight Control teams and Starliner teams still tracking and on time on docking. And that's about uh, 10 minutes from now. This window is uh, is one uh, of envy, I believe. It is the window in front of the commander seat of the Starliner spacecraft. That commander has a wonderful view right out the window, right uh, the forward window, uh, so they can see a lot of the action going out in front. Rosie uh, gets that lucky seat for this uh, Orbital Flight Test 2 mission. Quick update uh, on time. Um, everything's still moving towards that uh, undocking by Starliner at 1.36 p.m. Central Time, 2.36 p.m. Eastern. Um, the command to undock uh, will be sent up to Starliner in a little bit more than six minutes from now. That's, uh, that's the authority to proceed, or ATP, and it's basically a... Uh, command keystroke that uh, the rendezvous officer will send up to the spacecraft and that's telling its systems that uh, it will uh, that they are good to uh, enter the um, this uh, this plan for the undocking flight around the International Space Station again to reiterate that Starliner will be flying itself today uh, there'll be some inputs along the way um, from flight controllers here in Houston at the Starliner Mission Control. Uh, but it will be flying itself autonomously. And um, once that uh, authority to proceed command is sent, it'll be a little bit less than two minutes before, uh, before the hooks begin unlatching. There's 12 hooks on the nose of Starliner, and uh, six of them will uh, open and then uh, the, the next six will open, and then they'll command the uh, docking system ring to extend, and those springs will be all the force it takes to move Starliner away from the International Space Station's forward port. That'll be followed by a couple of very short uh, thruster bursts, two seconds and eight seconds, with the small reaction control system thrusters, and that'll continue to push away uh, Starliner, gaining a little bit of speed Again, as um, if uh, if you were watching some of the uh, rendezvous and docking coverage, you know that uh, when two spacecraft are flying near each other, everything's very carefully controlled, and uh, all the all the maneuvers are uh, not only planned out in advance, but they tend to go uh, pretty slow. Even though the uh, to us here on Earth, both spacecraft are moving at an orbital velocity of 17,500 miles an hour um, relative to each other. A lot slower than that. Now you see on the right uh, of this row of flight controllers uh, taking the flight director position today in the Starliner mission control room, our flight control room is uh, flight director Mike Lammers. Uh, to his left. Uh, in the gray suit is Flight Director Rick Hanfling, following along every step of the way.
Okay, copy. We're go for undock, and we'll stand by for your go for steps three and four. Good read. That word up to the crew, clearing, uh, clearing them, that uh, letting them know that Starliner is uh, go for undocking at its uh, at its planned time, about a uh, little bit under five minutes from now at 1:36 p.m. Houston time. International Space Station Capcom Rob Hayhurst in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. He's the voice you're hearing relay some of these um, com these uh, milestones up to the crew. Bob Hines aboard the International Space Station was the one to answer. Of course, in the Starliner Mission Control Room, and of which you're getting a live view now, sitting at the Capcom position, is. Uh, Canadian Space Agency astronaut Josh Kutrick, uh, as well as uh, the uh, Starliner astronaut uh, aficionado or expert, uh, Sonny Williams. She, of course, the expert on all things. On two, perform steps three and four of 1.602. We're going for steps three and four in 1.602. Station ISS attitude control configured for undock. Go to issue undock ATP. Houston copies. All right, so without confirmation from the crew aboard the International Space Station, the teams that you're seeing in this room uh, have the steps to go through and command uh, or allow the Starliner systems to proceed with an authority to proceed, uh, letting the uh, vehicle itself go into an automatic sequence to uh, unlatch the hooks and separate from the International Space Station, that command uh, to be issued about a minute from now. Rendezvous officer confirming that he has indeed sent up the authority to proceed command to Starliner to undock. Starliner remains on a timeline for uh, undocking in 1 minute 15 seconds from now. Station Houston on 2, undock ATP has been sent. Be advised that when NDS hook motors are driving, space to space comm may be ready. The hooks on Starliner's nose are set to are set to uh, open. They are going through that motion. Telemetry coming down from the vehicle, showing each showing the status of each of the uh, twelve hooks on Starliner.
It'll take about a minute and a half for the hooks to completely open. Separation confirmed, Starliner. Undocking complete. This undocking coming coming just as the ISS and Starliner. Houston on two. Starliner has established the expected opening rate. Trajectory is nominal. Expect OF1 in 22 minutes at a range of 170 meters. Houston copies OF1 at 170 meters and uh, looks like good separation. Houston concurs. Good words from the crew aboard the International Space Station. They're seeing a good separation as well. That separation time, right on time, 1.36 p.m. Central Time. The International Space Station and Starliner were 257 statute miles over the northern border of Singapore. Starliner, already six and a half meters away from the International Space Station, is moving at about a tenth of a meter per second. Starliner flying free. Station showing 90 seconds since undock complete. ISS thrusters are enabled. Houston copies. View you're seeing here is from the ISS as they track the Starliner moving away. Starliner already. 12 meters away from the International Space Station, heading out to a position of about 170 meters, 170 meters, when the eight bound. The overlay cross is looking good. Houston copies. And with that outbound fly around maneuver, which will uh, begin in 18 minutes and 45 seconds. That will that will push Starline that will push Starliner up and over the International Space Station, putting it on a course for a landing later today at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. That landing set for 5:49 p.m. Central Time. Starliner thrusters continuing to uh, help the spacecraft pick up the pace as it moves away from that forward port of the International Space Station. Starliner now 20 meters. Starliner pace continuing to be about uh, a little bit more than a tenth of a meter per second. Again, just as uh, just as uh, Starliner came in slowly during docking, it uh, it will move away slowly at, at these uh, early phases while it is in the proximity of the International Space Station. The lights you're seeing there on the screen, that's uh, looking from the perspective of space station uh, of the space station crew. And those lights are the, uh, the docking lights. They're in an orbital night time at this point, so that's, that's why they uh, highlight a bit more. And at this pace, it'll be about 16 minutes before Starliner and the space station are in uh, orbital daytime conditions, and we'll see a little bit more of the spacecraft. But for now, Starliner at a good pace, moving away as it's supposed to.
Flight controllers reporting Vesta and its sensors looking good, doing what they're supposed to. They're not performing any demos on the way out. Uh, on the way in, they did, and uh, Vesta is showing just what it's supposed to. Vesta being the system on board the Starliner spacecraft, optical guidance, navigation, and control equipment looking at the space station, providing us, uh, providing views to here in Mission Control Houston. This view, of course, uh, being from the station side looking at Starliner, but of course, uh, that's those systems looking good. We're even getting some uh, some visuals from the station cameras showing some of the thruster firings that uh, are enabling uh, Starliner to have a slow and steady uh, back back away from the station itself. And Vesta does represent a, a suite of different uh, different sensors, just as you mentioned there, Gary. It stands for um, Vision Based Electro Optical Sensor and Tracking Assembly. That's that's quite a mouthful, so that's why we call it Vesta, and that's really why there are so many uh, so many acronyms in the spaceflight business. And uh, so the next acronym occasion that we're coming up on is KOS Exit, and that is uh, the Keep Out Sphere, that uh, imaginary boundary around the International Space Station. Continuing to see some uh, great clear images of Starliner with those uh, thrusters. Uh, those are the very small thrusters, reaction control system thrusters. They produce less than 100 pounds uh, of thrust per firing, and they, uh, they're just there to fine tune the uh, Starliner path as it uh, backs away from the uh, International Space Station. But they produce some, uh, some very lovely imagery. Uh, especially against the uh, darkness of space. Starliner now crossing 50 meters, 50 meters away from the International Space Station forward port. Some of the imagery that we saw just there just a second ago was actually from the viewpoint of those Vesta sensors on the nose of Starliner looking at the space station. And now the image uh, reversed. This is the space station's view of Starliner as it backs away, continuing at a pace of about a tenth of, me of a meter per second. Starliner now more than 53 meters away from the International Space Station after a uh, on-time undocking that came about uh, nine minutes ago at 1.36 p.m. Central Time. Starliner going to continue this, uh, this pace going um, from the Starliner perspective backwards in a relatively straight line that's going to take place for another uh, just about 12 minutes before the outbound fly around maneuver uh, is performed and the uh, thrusters then fire to steer um, to steer Starliner up and over the International Space Station all throughout that uh, throughout that maneuver Starliner will keep its sensors keep its nose pointed at the International Space Station as those systems inform the uh, Starliner avionics of the uh, of its place in space, basically showing Starliner where it is, and the Starliner computers deciding where they want to go and how to get there. 
a very uh, intricate system, very detailed, and one that uh, that Starliner will use throughout uh, throughout the rest of undocking today, and uh, then to follow the course to uh, to a landing at White Sands later. You can see from this monitoring tool some of the reaction control system thruster firings uh, to keep the Boeing Starliner on a steady course straight out uh, from its uh, where it was docked for the past five days to the International Space Station. You can see at the top left uh, of this monitoring tool, it's about 63 meters away. We're heading to about 175, uh, just uh, on the outer edge of the keep out sphere, uh, and we'll perform that. Uh, outbound fly around maneuver to swing uh, above the International Space Station, uh, hugging that keep out sphere, just about 175 to 200 meter marker around the space station until we until we get uh, essentially right above it on what's called the R bar. If you draw a, a vertical line straight through the International Space Station, uh, it'll go right to that point. You can see on this graphic uh, to about uh, the number four, uh, there's another burn uh, called the departure initiation burn uh, that allows it to swing. Houston on two for CST, just letting you know everything is still looking really good. Copy that, looks good on our end as well. And that's great words uh, from the International Space Station Flight Control Room, that's Capcom Ray. Hayhurst, uh, uh, relaying up to the crew, uh, who is currently monitoring Starliner's uh, departure from the International Space Station. Uh, this whole time, uh, the, the key duo here for Starliner operations has been NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines. Uh, Hines, uh, for the undock procedures, takes on the lead role of uh, departure monitoring with Chell backing him up. Uh, they had reversed roles for the ride uphill. But uh, good uh, reports from the teams here in Mission Control Houston. Uh, everything continues to look good. Starliner is now about 74 meters from the International Space Station, making a slow and methodical retreat, uh, departing from the space station itself. Uh, we're going to just about 175 meters. As Starliner crosses 81 meters from the International Space Station, seeing the uh, still seeing the uh, docking lights, the docking and navigation lights uh, from Starliner from that point of view of the space station.
90 meters out, uh, things continue to look good as uh, Starliner continues its departure. We did get confirmation that the uh, teams at the landing site are currently at their hold position with the confirmation that they received of, su of a successful undocking. They're getting prepped uh, for a landing out in the western United States uh, later this afternoon. We're targeting uh, for mountain time, it's 4.49 p.m., 5.49 p.m. Central Time, East Coast is 6.49. Flight controller is getting ready to turn off those uh, docking lights on Starliner. Again, as Starliner moves away, and there we see the command was sent and received by the spacecraft and turned off those uh, those docking lights. And so now we see a little bit more of the navigation lights now that uh, Starliner is coming up on 100 meters away from the International Space Station. Everything continuing at pace, just as it's supposed to for Starliner. Starliner flying free for uh, and rendezvous reporting just uh, Starliner just cleared 100 meters. It's heading out to a point uh, about 170 meters from uh, the space station when it'll begin that uh, outbound fly around maneuver. Starliner has been flying free today for about 17 minutes now. Getting beautiful views from the uh, International Space Station cameras. Again, these three dots that you see is the Starliner spacecraft. We are in an orbital nighttime. Uh, Starliner and the International Space Station are 267 statute miles over Tasmania. They're about to cross over the Terminator line, so we are seeing uh, the horizon of the Earth itself as the sun uh, is about to rise. Um, everything looking good uh, on this beautiful shot here as we head out uh, to the uh, orbital uh, outbound fly around maneuver. Uh, teams here in Mission Control reporting uh, good performance of the Starliner spacecraft. It's heading where it's supposed to go. And we're at about 112 meters. Again, we're going to 175. And now that Starliner has cleared beyond that 100 meter point, it uh, was commanded to pick up pick up its speed. Now it's moving about twice as fast as before, which is about two tenths of a meter per second. Um, so still moving at orbital velocity, but in relative terms to the space station. Um, still very methodical, very careful path that it's following. And uh, again, space station cameras delivering very lovely views, very wonderful views. Flight controller is continuing to work towards that uh, outbound fly around position. That should, uh, that burn should take place a little bit more than four minutes from now. And that'll be, uh, that'll be followed by the exit of Starliner from the, from the keep out sphere, that, uh, that imaginary boundary around the space station. And this view of the International Space Station coming to us courtesy of the VESTA sensors that are on the nose of Starliner. This is Starliner's look at the International Space Station. You can see there the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon at the top, the signature truss that holds the solar arrays on the ISS. And uh, then looking basically clockwise, the Japanese experiment module Kibo um, down at the 6 o'clock position. Uh, the Russian laboratory, 
and uh, then the European laboratory, Columbus. So that is exactly how Starliner is looking at the space station as it uh, as it departs after five days docked to the orbiting lab laboratory. Beautiful shot. We're uh, starting to see the sun rise uh, in the horizon there. The space station uh, is uh, 270 statute miles just south uh, of New Zealand at this point. We're going into an orbital sunrise. There in the distance is the Boeing Starliner performing well as it uh, departs the International Space Station. We're we're at about 183 meters, still within the range that we were targeting for the outbound fly around one. We're getting a good shot uh, of uh, two commercial crew vehicles uh, in view at the same time. Rendezvous officer reporting that the uh, targeting coordinates for uh, the outbound fly around one burn have been set, have been sent rather, to the uh, Boeing Starliner spacecraft. That's going to command the thrusters to fire and, and lift Starliner uh, up and over the International Space Station. A little bit different approach than it took on its way in when it uh, approached from the Earth side of the space station and moved around to the forward port and then guided itself, uh, guided itself to that uh, to that docking last Friday. Ten seconds to the burn. Burn underway. Rendezvous reports good burn, good OF-1 burn, short for outbound fly-around burn, putting Starliner... Space to ground 2, OF-1 burn was nominal. The vehicle has exited the keep-out sphere. This concludes your monitoring per 1.602. And stay copies. Uh, it was a uh, great stay by Starliner. Uh, we're a little sad to see her go, but it uh, looks like a successful mission so far. Godspeed, Starliner. Great words. Thanks, Farmer. Astronaut Bob, Astronaut Bob Hines giving uh, Giving some words from the ISS crew as they watch Starliner depart the Keep Out Sphere and begin its departure from the International Space Station. Sad to see it go, and Godspeed, Starliner. We just heard from the ISS crew as uh, Starliner exited the uh, keep-out sphere, and it's begun its uh, 
its move up and over the International Space Station. Of course, there's more folks than the uh, flight controllers for Starliner watching carefully today this departure. Over in the uh, International Space Station flight control room, they're keeping, uh, keeping a watch on the uh, Starliner spacecraft as well as it maneuvers around the International Space Station. And uh, Leah Cheshire is over there um, watching all of that from the uh, space station perspective. Leah? That's right. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we have just crossed over the keep out sphere, as you heard mentioned. That's that 200 meter invisible sphere around the International Space Station. It helps flight controllers here on the ground monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles, whether or not they have crew on them. Uh, another one of those boundaries is known as the approach ellipsoid, or the AE. And of course, we aren't scheduled to cross through the AE for another uh, about 34 minutes. Um, and that is a two kilometer by two kilometer by four kilometer invisible boundary. Again, it helps teams monitor the uh, visiting vehicles that come and go to the space station. And of course, we are in a satellite handover from our tracking data and relay satellite systems. But just a look here at what the undocking process looks like. Of course, we had undocking on time uh, coming up on 27 minutes ago with physical separation happening just shortly after. The outbound fly around burn has been complete, which put the vehicle outside of the keep out sphere and will also move it up and over the International Space Station before the uh, vehicle moves behind and then down below the station, preparing for its departure burn or deorbit burn, I should say. Again, this is all autonomous. The vehicle is flying itself. Eventually, it'll be put into a co elliptic orbit before uh, the deorbit burn takes place and we see service module separation from that crew module, eventually landing in White Sands, New Mexico. Things are still looking good over here in the International Space Station flight control room, just right across the hall from uh, the Starliner control room that you see on screen. Teams here in the space station flight control room will continue to monitor the vehicle as it, uh, and you can see it moving up and over the space station now, but uh, teams here in the space station control room will continue monitoring the vehicle as it uh, moves toward the approach ellipsoid and through its exit. And once we reach that point, joint operations will uh, cease, but teams will still be watching and cheering for Starliner as it uh, targets its landing. And with Starliner outside of the keep out sphere and everything moving well on both sides of the uh, hall from the International Space Station Flight Control Room and Starliner Flight Control Room, we will toss it back over to my teammates Gary and Steve as they walk us through the mission. Thank you, Leah. All continues to look very good for Starliner's departure from the International Space Station. A little bit after the uh, top of the hour, uh, Thanks for tuning in today to watch Starliner undock from the International Space Station after five days connected to the orbital laboratory. Starliner disconnected itself from the forward port of the International Space Station just under 30 minutes ago. Right now, Starliner is uh, about 205 meters from the space station. It is uh, on a path to go up and over the uh, space station and get on a course that uh, that will lead it to a landing later today at White Sands Space Harbor. Go ahead, Wadi, with you on two. I just want to make sure you saw that the cleaning is complete uh, so we can do the ground steps to uh, for activation, fan activation. Station use 92 for Wadi. 
Yeah, thank you for that follow-up. And, yeah, we were watching the uh, the status in Optimus, and we have already reactivated those fans. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank
station, uh, and that, of course, uh, would be a pre-planned uh, maneuver to um, allow the Starliner. You can see the forward end is pointed towards the International Space Station, and there's a there's a hatch window, uh, and it will allow uh, astronauts on the inside to photograph uh, the International Space Station if necessary. Uh, but of course, no astronauts inside. We do have Rosie the Rocketeer and Jebediah Kerman inside, uh, but they don't really have the photography skills that we need uh, to uh, take photos of the International Space Station. So uh, we'll forego executing the uh, outbound fly around maneuvers to. Continue continue to fly around the International Space Station and uh, execute that departure initiation burn that sets us up uh, for an anticipated landing uh, later this afternoon. All these maneuvers being performed by uh, the reaction control system thrusters on Starliner. Small jets make small bursts, uh, less than 100 pounds force each time they, uh, each time they pulse keeping Starliner stable and steering it through. Uh, we have larger engines called OMAX. That's a short for Orbital Maneuvering and Control System thrusters. Each of those thrusters, we have 20 of them, and each of them generates about 1,500 pounds, 1,500 pounds of, uh, of force. So they'll be used later today when, uh, when it's time to slow Starliner down for uh, for its return to Earth and to slow it to uh, begin that descent towards White Sands. What you're seeing here are camera views uh, from the cameras of the International Space Station pointing towards the Starliner vehicle. You can see uh, now these cameras are operated by a flight controller in the International Space Station flight control room who has complete control over the cameras, doesn't necessarily need uh, the authority from the flight director to, to make these maneuvers and track. They have, they have autonomy to do so. Uh, but they, have, uh, they can also control the exposure. And you can see sometimes we're going in and out of uh, exposure to images. We do notice that when the image itself is um, overexposed a bit, we do have better insight into seeing the thrusters. We can see the plumes from the reaction control thrusters. Uh, so we'll see what kinds of views we get. But it looks like now 20 seconds from the um, initiation of that departure, uh, initiation burn, uh, looks like we may be getting some good views of the Starliner from the International Space Station. 10 seconds. We'll stand by. Prop reports burning. This is a nine second, and we have cutoff. Rendezvous reports good DI burn. We will exit the approach ellipsoid in 22 minutes. And you can see Starliner moving out of that camera view as it continues its, uh, its exact course, the exact prescribed path. Its exact prescribed path uh, over the International Space Station. Controllers also report that the entry cover is driving closed. Seeing Starliner in this image from uh, another camera on the International Space Station, Starliner is... Station Houston Space to Ground 2 for Starliner. DI burn was nominal. Expect approach ellipsoid exit in 22 to 2 minutes. Copy. Thanks. So with that, we're tracking uh, approximately 2.36 p.m. Uh, as the estimated time for the Starliner spacecraft to uh, exit the approach ellipsoid. Again, that is a significant marker. Uh, it does mark the end of joint operations. Right now, the two flight control teams that are supporting this mission in the Starliner flight control room and the International Space Station flight control room operating under what's called uh, joint flight rules. So we're all playing by the same flight book. Um, but uh, at uh, the, 
uh, approach initiation or uh, approach ellipsoid marker, uh, it'll really be up to the teams in the Starliner flight control room uh, to bring the spacecraft home. Flight Director Mike Lammers reports entry cover closed and latched, putting Starliner in its configuration for uh, departing the vicinity of the International Space Station. It is on a path to uh, exit the approach ellipsoid in just under 19 minutes from now. With a good uh, departure initiation burn, um, Starliner uh, outside the keep-out sphere, as mentioned, heading towards the approach ellipsoid. So it is moving further away from the International Space Station. Right now we're looking at about 480 meters uh, and counting. The rate has increased significantly from when it was much closer to the space station. We were tracking 0.1 and 0.2 meters per second. We're at about um, 0.85 meters per second now. So you see after AE exit, the uh, Starliner itself still has quite a journey ahead of it. It's about uh, from the time that the Starliner itself exits the approach ellipsoid uh, to the time that it actually touches down is about uh, just a little over three hours. Flight director confirming and uh, showing all that all the hooks are closed, meaning that the entry cover is secured at the nose of Starliner.
Again, Starliner is uh, performing nominally. It's about uh, 600 meters from the International Space Station. We were following along with some of the cameras that are mounted on the outside of the International Space Station, but the uh, exposure of the sun is uh, it's, it's hard to get a good uh, lock on the vehicle right now. But we are getting good um, good data flowing from the spacecraft. We'll see if we can regain some of those views. It is during an orbital sun, uh, during an orbital daytime. Space Station and Starliner spacecraft are about 262 statute miles uh, over the Pacific Ocean. We're about to cross over Panama. Propulsion officer reporting 12 good crew module jets. The team just did a quick hot fire of those crew module jets. They are the very small RCS thrusters. That was just a check out of the system. That's the, uh, those are the jets that will position um, Starliner during its return to Earth. Um, the service module carries most of the thrusters. But uh, at the very end of the flight, which is coming up later today, the uh, service module will separate and the crew module will fly on its own and this hot fire test was confirming that those 12 thrusters are performing well and uh, again propulsion reporting that uh, all 12 jets did exactly what they were supposed to during that very brief hot fire test. Next up, we're coming up on the departure resume burn. That is going to come up in 1 minute 43 seconds.
All right, everything's looking good for Starliner's departure. We're coming up in that departure. Resume burn uh, in about 10 seconds. Can we dig it? And we did pass the departure, resume, burn milestone. Uh, flight uh, controllers, the rendezvous officer, very happy with the trajectory of uh, Starliner as it makes its way towards exiting the approach ellipsoid. Things looking good uh, for Starliner's departure from the International Space Station. We're still uh, tracking an exit of that approach ellipsoid uh, in about uh, six minutes or so. And, you know, we talk, uh, as we mentioned uh, a lot, we talk a lot about the machines. We talk a lot about the uh, spacecraft and uh, fl the, f the mechanics of or orbital flight and everything like that. And, you know, none of this gets done without people. And it takes, uh, it takes a lot of folks to uh, do, stuff, uh, do stuff this complex. And uh, one of those folks is having his, uh, his last shift during uh, today's Starliner return. It is, uh, you see him there on the right side of the screen in the blue shirt, that is Rick Kressig. He is uh, one of the ground control, we call him GC, and he is, uh, he's working his last shift um, in space flight. He's uh, been in the business more than 30 years and he is retiring. Um, flight director Mike Lammer is congratulating, uh, congratulating him uh, a little, just moments ago. And uh, so Rick will be, uh, Going from uh, space flight to his uh, to his retirement, um, great help to us on the uh, Starliner team. He's one of the folks who uh, coordinates a number of different things here in the uh, control room, and uh, does uh, magnificent work. So, on behalf of all of us on the Starliner team, congratulations to him, and a thank you. Flight controllers continuing to monitor Starliner's pace and course around the International Space Station. Starliner staying on its uh, on its prescribed path away from the International Space Station, flying itself autonomously. No crew on board Starliner, and the crew of the International Space Station having a uh, bid farewell. With all of its major burns completed, we're about three minutes away from the uh, Starliner leaving the approach ellipsoid and bringing to an end the uh, joint operations phase of this uh, orbital flight test two mission. 
all of this being set on a course to uh, have Starliner head for a, uh, a landing later today at White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. That landing set for 5.49 p.m. Houston time, 6.49 p.m. in the east. And locally there at the landing site, it will be 4.49 p.m. in the mountain time zone. Starliner right on track uh, to meet that landing. Of course, uh, we've been following the undocking operations. You're seeing some of the telemetry following the Starliner spacecraft itself uh, as it uh, separated uh, from the International Space Station uh, right on time earlier this afternoon, 1.36 uh, p.m. Central Time, and has been making its slow and methodical exit uh, and departure from the space station to head towards that landing. Uh, if you guessed the uh, approach ellipsoid was the yellow circle that you have in view, you would be correct. Uh, that marker is the end of uh, joint operations uh, with the International Space Station flight control teams. The Starliner flight control teams will carry the vehicle all the way back to a landing in the western United States. It's about uh, a little more than three hours from the time we exit uh, that yellow sphere, sphere there. Uh, to the time that we land uh, in the western United States. That exit's uh, anticipated about a minute from now. We'll w wait for confirmation from the teams uh, that the Starliner has, of course, exited the uh, approach ellipsoid. It is, at this point, uh, more than a kilometer away from the station. We're tracking uh, about 1,100 meters. In about 30 seconds left before Starliner leaves the approach ellipsoid, we are still getting great views of the spacecraft from the International Space Station. You're seeing there um, Starliner against the uh, daylit surface of the uh, surface of the Earth. And in fact, that is uh, off the Atlantic seaboard. And in the foreground there to the right that's uh, the solar panel from a, another commercial vehicle not another commercial crew vehicle but a commercial cargo vehicle called Cygnus camera view continuing to track Starliner which is exactly where it needs to be about 20 seconds away from the, the approach ellipsoid exit entry cover closed and latched Of course, zooming in. Station Houston Space to Ground 2 for Starliner. Starliner has exited the approach ellipsoid and is on a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. We're beginning CTV2 deactivation. This is your last Starliner status call until the deorbit burn. Copies. Thanks for the update. Godspeed, Starliner. Godspeed, Starliner. And with that, uh, you heard uh, that confirmation being relayed up to the International Space Station crew. Starliner spacecraft has officially exited the approach ellipsoid. 
Uh, so that 24-hour free drift safe trajectory uh, is is really just uh, as a as a precautionary thing, just in case Starliner needed to, it would be able to stay in an orbit for 24 hours with uh, in a safe trajectory, not uh, with any uh, contact with the International Space Station, any any risk of uh, any risk of contact. So that is that is a standard um, free drift trajectory that it's on. Uh, but with that confirmation, uh, that is the end of joint operations. And that, of course, has been relayed uh, up to the International Space Station crew. They're relieved of their duties for monitoring, really up to the Starliner teams uh, to get the Starliner home a little bit more than three hours from now. Starliner flying its perfect course, uh, first undocking uh, from the forward port of the International Space Station on time today at 1.36 p.m. Central Time. Now um, now departing the approach ellipsoid a uh, little bit more than an hour later. Um, everything looking really good for uh, Everything looking really good for Starliner, and across the hall, we're going to check in one more time with Leah Cheshire, who's been uh, who's been looking at the ISS perspective and that flight control team as they have watched just as eagerly as the Starliner control team, as the uh, Boeing Starliner spacecraft uh, has left the vicinity, the immediate vicinity, I should say, of the International Space Station. Leah. Absolutely, Steve, and thanks so much. Of course, since the uh, Starliner vehicles out of the approach ellipsoid, joint operations have now ceased between the, the two teams. Of course, uh, International Space Station flight controllers here are still monitoring all of the systems aboard the station itself, and they'll continue to watch the rest of Starliner's journey home. Uh, but as they relayed up to the crew, any actions are, are now um, complete on their part and are all in the hands of the Starliner team across the hall. And uh, with that successful uh, departure from the approach ellipsoid, that's our final checkpoint from the space station team today. Uh, thank you so much for having us and uh, allowing us to be part of the mission. We're excited to see Starliner back again in the future. Thanks, and uh, back over to you, Steve and Gary. All right, thanks, Leah. That's right, that ends joint operations with the International Space Station teams, but of course, the mission is not over. We'll soon be wrapping up our coverage of the uh, Starliner's uh, undocking and departure from the International Space Station, but our coverage will continue to follow uh, the Starliner uh, for a landing in the western United States. That coverage will begin 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 4.45 p.m. Central. If you're out uh, near the desert, near the landing site in White Sands Space Harbor, New Mexico, uh, that'll be 3.45 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, but Steve, it's been a pleasure to follow this uh, mission through its undocking and exit of the approach ellipsoid. It was a very uh, successful undocking and, and exit. Uh, and so, so we'll uh, be looking forward to seeing the Starliner very short, very soon coming home. Boeing Starliner spacecraft has been performing very well throughout this orbital flight test two mission. Uh, you know, it's been put through a, a lot of different paces, just as you're supposed to do with a flight test. And uh, so far, working very, very well. Everything is going going well. Can't wait to see this, uh, this landing. Starliner is going to go through uh, one of the more dynamic phases of the, uh, of the mission as it plunges through uh, Earth's atmosphere, encounters that heat and uh, of course uh, opens the parachutes and comes down in uh, White Sands Space Harbor where our teams both from Boeing and from NASA are standing by to welcome it back to Earth after, uh, after what's been about a six day mission. That's right, and of course, uh, tune in for our coverage of those events. Uh, but for the uh, teams here in the Starliner Flight Control Room and, and the International Space Station Flight Control Room, that'll wrap up our coverage for now. Uh, stay tuned for the landing coverage coming up in just a couple of hours. With that, this is Mission Control Houston.